All right, well, thank you everyone so much for coming today. Um, my talk today is about a project called Darwin 200. Um, I hope it'll be of interest. So uh, here goes. Could you next slide? So basically, the project is called Darwin 200. Um, our goal is to help change the world for the better. Um, we're here specifically and have sponsored WildScreen to try and find and recruit 200 camera operators. Um, it's a bit of a complicated story, so if you'll allow me, I'm going to explain the project first. It'll take about 15 minutes, and then after that, you'll see how the camera operators fit in and the opportunity that we're presenting. So if that's okay, we'll explain the project first. Okay, next, next slide. So in a nutshell, what we're doing is taking a spectacular tall ship called Oosterskelde. It's a Dutch ship around the world. On to the next slide. Um, following Charles Darwin's voyage on HMS Beagle. As I'm sure you all realize, this is the most important journey in the history of, of natural history, in many ways. Um, the, the journey in which Darwin undertook the field work and research that eventually led to his, his, well, not just the theory of evolution, many other theories as well. So what we've done is simplify the voyage of the Beagle uh, into a, a voyage, um, a modern voyage, basically. It took Darwin five years. It's taking us two years, and we've broken it into 32 voyage legs, right the way to Australia and back. Darwin did actually cross the Indian Ocean. We, we couldn't for logistical reasons. It would add it on about nine months onto the voyage, so we, we, we're not crossing the Indian Ocean. But we're going to every single major port that Darwin went to, and we've added a few extra ones as well uh, for the logistics of the expedition and for practical reasons as well. So that's what we're undertaking. Next slide. Um, the project has three goals, three very clear focus goals. What we're doing is training the world's top young conservation leaders. These young people are called Darwin leaders. Um, we're going to talk more about them in a second, and you'll see how the camera operators fit in with them. Uh, the next element is to create the world's most exciting classroom to engage millions and millions of young people around the world as the ship goes around with a whole rainbow of educational, conservation, and environmental related activities. Um, and uh, and to, it's entirely free for schools right the way across the globe. And we already do a lot of this already. And the last element is a series of research projects that are going to be undertaken in real time around the world. Next slide, please. So we're absolutely honored beyond words to have three incredible people as our, our patrons and supporters. The amazing Dr. Jane Goodall, who I'm sure everyone knows and knows, needs no introduction. The equally amazing Sylvia Earle. Um, and the inspirational Dr. Sarah Darwin, who's one of Charles Darwin's great, great uh, granddaughters. So direct descendant of, of the great man himself, which is pretty cool. Next slide, please. So um, why are we doing this? And why are we using a tour ship? Well, basically, we're not trying to pretend to be Charles Darwin. This, that's not the point of this project or, or recreate in that sense. We're using these spectacular tour ships to symbolize the Beagle. Go to the next slide. They, um, they absolutely resonate adventure. We've done two test voyages, which you're going to hear about in a second, and they just they symbolize adventure. When you come into ports, the, the, the port is crowded with people wanting to know what's going on. You know, people want to know what it is. Is it a pirate ship? Is it an explorer? You know, people just are magnetized by these historic tall ships. They're such special vessels. So we're, we're using a similar tall ship. It, it is quite different, in fairness, to, to Darwin's Beagle. Um, but nevertheless, we're using it as a symbol and like a, a link back to his historic voyage. And honestly, as a magnet to get people so excited about what we're undertaking. So it's more like a symbol in, in many ways. Uh, next slide, please. Thanks. OK, so I'm just going to really quickly explain in a couple of minutes each of these key project objectives, the three uh, elements to this, this project. The first are the, these Darwin leaders. So what we're doing is selecting 200 of these, hence the project's name, Darwin 200. We're selecting 200, one from each of, two, each of 200 countries and states around the world. So one from Papua New Guinea, for example, one from Ethiopia, one from Ecuador, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we're bringing them in groups um, of six to eight to the ports, the land, where Charles Darwin made landfall. Uh, next slide, please. Um, they're aged between 18 and 25, although the upper limit's deliberately a bit vague. We're, we're already accepting some that are up to 30 just because they're so exceptional people. And um, 
what we're doing is bringing them into the ports for a life-changing package of really focused activities in partnership with NGOs, conservation groups and NGOs, to give them incredible skills that then they'll take back to their home countries and hopefully help change the world over the course of their careers. So we, the, the really important point though is these Darwin leaders are not normal people. They are extraordinary. They are absolutely exceptional elite people that have done amazing things. Um, I, I can give you many examples if you want to hear about some of them. But they, they have, all of them have done extraordinary things. So we're finding one in each, of country, each country and state around the world. Next slide, please. Um, the one quality that we're looking for in them, it doesn't matter whether, what, what university they've gone to or whether they've been to college or honestly, even if they can read or write, that's irrelevant. The one quality that we're looking for is the burning passion, the flame inside of them to make things better. We've, we've recruited ones that have planted 20,000 trees at the age of 16 or you know, set up NGOs you know, at a tiny age, often in really remote circumstances and with no support and no money at all. And they've just pulled up their bootstraps and done awesome things. So that's the quality. So if you know any extraordinary, exceptional people, please put them away. <laughs> We're finding 200 of these over the, the next, um, next two years. Okay, next slide, please. Um, so basically what they do, we bring them, say, into the ports. So they're not sailing on the ship. They're coming into the ports to undertake a really, really focused package of activities. We partner them with NGOs in each port. Um, and then they have to undertake a very, very focused training program with those NGOs. In a nutshell, and it is a bit more complicated than this, but in a nutshell, they have to pick an animal or a plant that Charles Darwin studied, of which there are literally hundreds or thousands um, during his global voyage. And they have to um, undertake three objectives. The first objective, and using the ship as a floating laboratory and media platform, um, they have to undertake these objectives. The first one is to study the population of their chosen animal or plant and see how it's changed. And in practically every single case, I'm sad to say, there's been a negative trajectory. I mean, it's, it's quite hard to think of any where that's not true, with the exception of invasive species, of course, like cockroaches and rats and so forth. But, but with the exception of those invasive species, it, in most cases, there's been a negative trajectory. So they have to undertake field research with their NGO partner and look at how that animal or plant has changed, the population has changed, the degree to which it's declined, whether it's collapsed, whether it's recovering, whether it's stable, whether it's still declining. They have to basically undertake that research with their NGO partner and make a film, which is where you'll see the camera operators come in, a film, a photo essay, and a written report for their first objective. Next objective is very similar. They have to work with the NGOs and document the NGO's work and other work that's being done to conserve their chosen species. Um, um, and, and again, make a film, a photo essay, and a report concerning that. And the last element is where they really have to use their own initiative. They've got to get out there, do interviews, go do their own research, find out their own findings, start using their brain really intensely and work out what more could be done, how you could make it better for that species of animal or plant in the future. So that's their third objective. So there's 200 of these Darwin leaders. We want each of them to make three films three photo essays and three reports on these different subjects. So 600 films in total, and it'll be a rainbow of subjects. Obviously, each Darwin leader is a totally different subject, different animal or plant. So everything from whale sharks in the Pacific to frigate birds in the Galapagos and out the world's largest albatross colony in the Falklands and everything you can imagine in between. So the idea is that we'll be releasing all of this completely free online. Um, as part of their project activities, also to engage millions of people around the world as well in these different projects and, and exercises. But the key point is that these Darwin leaders will then go back to their home countries, empowered, upskilled, and hopefully will take what they've learned, because it's all about an exchange of ideas from their countries to the NGOs and the ports, and vice versa. It's about an exchange of ideas, really. Okay, next slide, please. So super quickly, to give an example, let's say we, we select a Darwin leader from for sake of argument, let's say South Africa, let's, for sake of argument, call him Paul. He comes to the Galapagos um, and selects a project which one of the NGOs in the Galapagos is already undertaking, let's say frigate birds. So they have to undertake a, the first objective to look how the frigate bird population is doing and how much it's declined. What's, the second objective is what's being done to conserve it. 
and the third, again, is to use their initiative and get out there and find out and speculate what more they could be doing. Okay, next slide. So that's the first goal of the project, the Darwin Leaders. The second is to engage millions of young people around the world as the ship goes around. So it's a two-year voyage, and every single day of that two years, we're going to be pumping out, next slide, <laughs> pumping out a whole range of project activities and experiments um, every single day as we go around the world. But in particular, we're organizing 100 Nature Hour events, one every week, obviously, for two years. If you could kind of go to the next slide. So every single week, we're going to have essay competitions, live experiments that they can be replicating it in schools, research projects, um, interviews, um, weekly nature hour stories with conservationists from the field, question and answer sessions live with real conservationists in, in each of these different ports, and, and docu little mini documentaries, and of course, the rainbow of content that the Darwin leaders uh, will, be, will be releasing as well. We have a couple of really cool hero prizes. So as the schools do all this through the two years, the winning school will actually be taken, an entire class and their teachers, we want to take them to the Galapagos, which will be an awesome prize for kids. Um, and yeah, our goal is to reach millions of people over this um, through this, the course of this project. Okay, next slide. So I kind of, my other life is creating resource boxes. I, I raise a load of money each year and create tens of thousands of resource boxes for schools. And I write all the books and make films for them and seed kits and stuff. So we know this stuff works because I've been doing it for years and the schools love it. So um, that's basically what we're doing on a vo global voyage, but um, yeah, online, more online really. Okay, next slide. Oh, sorry, that's just the resource box we're shipping out. Next slide. And then last but not least, we're doing a series of research projects. These are deliberately a bit nebular at the moment as the, as the elements crystallize in each of the voyage locations. But we're planning a, a series of research projects. Uh, next slide. We've got two PhD students on all of the voyage legs. And the goal is we'll be doing, yeah, coral reef surveys and studies about the coral reef habitats that we're going to be visiting, a cetacean, a whale and dolphin survey, seabird surveys, probably a garbology survey looking at plastics in the oceans and where they come from uh, and so forth. So a, 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 serious, a serious set of research projects as we go around the world as well. Okay, next slide. Oh, and I should ask, lastly add, it is a sailing ship. We're going to sail as much as possible, but inevitably um, it'll, it'll use its motors into ports and out, and there's a lot of flights involved. So we're actually planting twice the trees back into the, um, the Atlantic rainforests of Brazil, which Darwin visited, but have since mostly been destroyed. Um, so it's actually going to be double carbon positive. Um, so we are conscious of that, obviously, as well. So, okay, next slide. So, um, on the very last element, sorry, is that we're also raising some funds to bring on underprivileged youngsters on the sailing legs to help give them new skills and like a new, new lease of life. Um, we're working with several sponsors on this at the moment. Okay, next one. So those are the, the, the main goals of the project. That's what we're setting out to do. The next bit of my talk shows you what we have done to make it real. So um, the goal, obviously, is this global voyage starting next August. Um, this is genuinely the greatest natural history story in many ways of all time. Darwin's findings in this voyage changed everything, as I'm sure everyone realizes and appreciates. It's been described as the single greatest thought in human history. Um, so it's a, a pretty serious subject. Um, if you skip through these next ones quickly. Um, so yeah, it covers a rainbow of subjects from Galapagos um, and obviously the, the spectrum of incredible animals in these, these ports, <laughs> from Sally Lightfoot crabs to obviously the giant tortoises to marine iguanas and a whole range, a rainbow of amazing animals. So we have to raise, or we, sorry, we have now raised four million pounds to do this project. It's a pretty big effort. It's taken 10 years of planning and preparation to do that. What we've done is a seven-week test voyage around the whole of the UK in a different ship to get our systems right. We did that first in 2020 and then another one in 2021. And um, we just wanted to experiment and see what we get right, what we get wrong, what we, yeah, what we can learn and just see how it works because it's quite different working on a, sh a ship as opposed to um, in a laboratory or in a studio and so forth. It's quite different. Um, so yeah, our first voyage was really about a concept. The second was to consolidate relationships with partners and sponsors and philanthropists. And now we're ready to start in August 2023, the global voyage. Uh, so very quickly, you can skip through these quite quick. 
So this was the ship we used for the UK voyages. It's, it's different from the global voyage one. This is called Pelican of London. And during these UK voyages, she undertook a whole range of different activities to test the systems. Um, okay, keep going, there we go. That's where we went, we sailed the right way around the UK and um, yeah, undertook a series of miniature research projects. Um, ocean pH, marine wildlife surveys, yeah, water column and plastic trawls. You know, some of the research projects in miniature. It was, that was what its intention was. Um, we were really honored to have live lectures with James, Sylvia and Sarah and we tested some satellite feeds to, to speak direct from Bass Rock, the world's largest gannet colony. And that's the sort of thing we're going to be doing throughout the global voyage every, every week. That's the plan, anyway. Um, and that's the ship there in Cardiff, actually, with some of the sponsors that have made it all possible. Um, yeah, as you can skip through these quick. Um, so those are some of the young scientists we brought on in partnership with the University of Plymouth in 2020. And uh, yeah, they had an amazing time documenting everything from sunfish to bass rock. And we managed to get them to some really exciting locations to, to undertake this research projects actually out in the field in some really, really amazing wildlife locations. Oh, that's two of them there, actually, <laughs> undertaking some of their projects. Um, and, and likewise, where possible, in the shallows, they did dive surveys and snorkel surveys, uh, looking at some of the life. So this is, this is actually this is quite an important slide because it, it shows what we've been doing. We partnered with an amazing group called Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. I'm sure a load of you might know these guys. Um, they do live lectures every single, or well, pretty much day, um, beam to schools across the planet. And that's the partner that we're doing these 100 live events throughout the two-year program. Um, so this is actually beaming live via satellite from Bass Rock to a school in Canada. And the school can ask a question, for example, like, how does a gannet raise a chick? And with the, the little camera, you can actually go and show them in real time. It's really cool. So that's what we're hoping to do everywhere from Galapagos to South Georgia and everywhere in between. Okay, next slide. Um, yeah, actually, we'll go to the next one. So that was the conclusion of the UK for the, the first one, the 2021. And we were really lucky we brought it into London on perfect weather day and um, brought it in. Just very quickly, just so you can see it, we did the same thing again in 2021, but for about twice the duration. And again, took the ship around the whole of the UK. Um, and as you keep going through these. And yeah, we're very, very lucky. We went to um, St. Michael's Mount and lots of key islands. In fact, if you're interested, we filmed a series off the back of this and it premiered literally last night on History Channel. Um, it's called Britain's Secret Islands, if you'd like to see it, and it's, it's a story about this journey. All righty, so um, that's basically what we have done. Now we're moving to the global voyage and the role of the camera operators. So I'm hoping I've whetted your appetite uh, in this. Um, so next slide. So um, what we're doing now, we've chartered a different ship. You go to the next one, that's Pelican, and that's Ursus Gilde. Um, we've char chartered this spectacular Dutch tour ship um, called Ostersgilde, and we're taking it now around the world. As I mentioned earlier, if you go to the next one, it's a simplified version of Darwin's voyage on the Beagle. It does involve every major port that he went to, but we have added in a few locations that he didn't go to. For example, Easter Island. We've got these projects taking place in all of those red dots that you can see here. All of those little spots are the ports where, we, where we're stopping at. Um, and as I say, there's a few extra ones that Darwin didn't go to, but they're deliberate for logistical reasons and lots of other practical reasons. Cool. Next slide. Um, so we've built an amazing team. The team that run this ship are just awesome. They've already undertaken two voyages like this before. They're very experienced. They're very, very, very professional. Uh, next slide. And um, well, here's some shots. I think this is off the Antarctic Peninsula on the, the previous voyage. That's just girl they did. Um, so they're really, really extremely experienced and extremely knowledgeable because taking tour ships around the world is extraordinarily complicated, as I'm sure as you can imagine. So um, yeah, it's a really good team that we're working with. This is inside. She's beautiful, wood panelled. She actually has a, a bar, a piano and a wood fired stove. So she's a pretty cool vessel. So if you want to come on one of the, the southern legs, like in the Falklands or in the Chilean fjords, um, yeah, you'd be able to have a fire like in this wood fire stone, which is pretty cool. Um, okay, so basically now to the camera operators. So what we're trying to do is match camera operators with these Darwin leaders. So you've got to remember these Darwin leaders are coming from 200 countries and states around the world. Many of them in particular come from quite remote locations and 
from any country, they might not necessarily know how to use cameras and or editing, at least in a serious professional way. So what we want to do, and besides, that's not their purpose anyway, they're not really there as filmmakers, they're there focusing 100% on their conservation activities and learning from the, from the partners, the NGOs. So um, what we want to do is try and recruit 200 trainee camera operators for an amazing opportunity to partner with these, with these Darwin leaders. We want to basically have one Darwin leader with one camera operator to execute their projects. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, that's the goal. So remember those three objectives they have to do. Make a film, a photo essay, and a report on the population of their animal in question, the current conservation status, and the future, and new strategies. Um, that's what we want the camera operators to do, to drive that with them. It is, it's, it's definitely not a holiday, it's intense. They've got to do this in a week, which might sound ambitious, but with the help of the NGO partners, it's absolutely doable. I've done it myself on many of the UK overseas territories that I, I went to for a, a different series. They can absolutely do it, um, especially with local guiding, guidance and help and assistance. So that's the objective of the camera operators, to help those Darwin leaders make those films. Okay, next shot. Um, <laughs> there we go. So what does it offer? If you guys are interested in this, what does it offer? It offers you the chance to go to awesome locations often places that the public can't access, to see amazing wildlife and meet incredible, inspiring conservationists, and honestly, to help these, these, um, these Darwin leaders. You'll also obviously get the credits and all your the CVs, and um, equally you'll get the films, you can use them any other, anywhere you want, we're releasing them online anyway, so the more you use them, the better as well. And a copy of all of the footage um, that you film, you can take and use for demo reels and whatever you want as well. So hopefully it, it, it's pretty cool for those that come and take part as well. And equally, let's be honest, it's going to be a pretty awesome adventure. Um, so you can see all those different places that you can choose from, from Galapagos all the way to French Polynesia and everywhere in between. Next slide. Um, yeah, so it, it, our goal is really to make it possible for this Darwin Leader program. And also it, it does help the NGOs that we're working with as well. Now we can cover all of the costs in the ports, so it costs nothing in the ports, and equally we've got a bursary scheme to help with the flights as well, so if, if you need help with flights, we can absolutely cover them too. Um, and we will try our very hardest to place you in the places that you want to go and or are interested in, obviously when they're available. So if you have a particular interest, let's say in penguins, well the Falkland Islands would be the place, there's five species there and it's just awesome for penguins. So we'll do our very, very best to try and, try and do that. But I mean, equally, all of the sites are awesome in different ways. Um, next slide. Um, yeah, it is an unpaid role, so it's not paid, but equally, it's an amazing opportunity, particularly for those starting out in their careers and wanting a first leg onto the old, uh, the ladder, the career ladder. So hopefully it's a really good opportunity for those that want to. Um, if you're interested in taking part, We've got a spreadsheet on a laptop at the back. Please come and, and see myself and my, my good colleagues, my Darwin 200 friends, and sign your name on the form. We're gonna send out an info pack in about a week's time. And or you can sign up for the same thing on our website. Just go to darwin200.com um, if you're interested and would like more information. Uh, the next slide, please. <laughs> and last but not least, um, we've secured already about 50 of the 200 Darwin leaders. Again, these are not normal people. These are elite, exceptional people. If you know some extraordinary people that have done exceptional things in the conservation world, please, please, please pass this to them because that's what we're looking for. It doesn't matter what, what subject it is, whether it's animals, plants, whatever. What we're looking for is that burning flame and you immediately know it. It stands out straight away, that burning passion. So if you do know any extraordinary young conservationists, Please, please, please put them away. So, I think that's my last slide. If you go to the next one, I think it's question answers. So thank you very, very, very much for listening to me. And if you've got any questions, I'm here to answer them. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>